Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. This is Catherine Pierce. Welcome to Supper Time in the South cooking video. Tonight, I am cooking supper. And I am making chicken pot roast. Instead of beef roast, it's going to be chicken pot roast. And y'all, it's great. I've been making this now a lot because the chicken thighs are very inexpensive. And I love the dark meat as well. There's the white meat, but the dark meat is just, to me, extra juicier. And I am sprinkling this with soul food seasoning that I got at the grocery store. It's got salt and paprika. Um, it's got coriander, cayenne pepper, black pepper, garlic, celery, and cumin. And we just found it uh, on the spice shelf, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try. So what I'm doing here, I'm basically just browning these. I've already got my um, oven on to 350, and I'm just kind of turning these over and browning them on both sides. And when I get through here, we're gonna be adding a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, a few more spices. And then I'm gonna add the broth and whatnot. Uh, you'll see. This is, like I said, a very, very good um, meal. You can, you'll have plenty of leftovers uh, for sure. And um, you get this in here. I don't like touching raw chicken. I don't. Usually I have my gloves on, but I don't. I didn't today. I just don't like this. <laughs> Okay, so while we're waiting for this, and I'm going to move it around, I'm going to tell you I'm going to put some fresh garlic. There's nothing better for me than fresh garlic, and I have about four toes of garlic. And all I'm going to do is just cut them. I've got a little presser. But I'm not going to use that today for the sake of time. Actually, I think sometimes you waste a lot of it when you um, use those uh, garlic presses. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but uh, behind me you'll see some flowers that I picked in my garden. Well, there goes one garlic on the floor. Well, anyway, you'll see some tomatoes back there and uh, some flowers out of my garden. Okay, you see those? I'm real proud of my flowers, but my tomatoes, I'm not. Um, I planted 70, about 75 um, tomato bushes. Y'all, that's all I got. That is all I got. And um, I'm disgusted. Um, usually I come out with just a ton of them. And I know you've heard about that tomato worm. Well, they will literally have an orgy in my uh, garden. I kid you not. I would go out there at night with my goggles on, night goggles. And you wouldn't believe them things. They were about six, seven, eight inches long. They were horrible horrible and I just you know they just stripped my vines just stripped them stripped the plants they were they were just having a heyday and um, a lot of people here in Michigan had the same thing and I don't know if y'all did and uh, where you're at but I certainly did and it just makes me sick because I love tomatoes I love to make all different kinds of things but I'm just gonna have to contact somebody that's got it got them and that's just what I'm gonna have to do um, and um, they got into my pepper plants as well and I always like to make um, hot pepper jelly I just love it and I make just a little tip with my hot pepper jelly I use a little bit of it and put it in my chicken salad and it is great 
and it kind of cuts it. It gives it a little sweet taste and kind of cuts some of that mayonnaise out, and that's what I do. All right, as you can see, uh, I'm letting it brown. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. A little bit. And then I'm, I'm getting um, the little, that looks a little browner than most, but that's really the way I want it. And um, it smells so good in this kitchen. So I'm going to cut up some onion. And I don't care, you know, how you, you don't have to be fixy about cutting it. I just take it and I just cut it in half like that. And these are some of Vidalia onions, um, which my first segment, I did stuffed Vidalia onions. And so this is um, some of them. Y'all, that's pretty much all I get. I like red onions, okay, when I can't get the Vidalias, but uh, I'm just, I don't know, I've just been around the Vidalias. One thing while we're waiting on this, I'm gonna tell you a little secret side dish. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you're busy working and you haven't cooked anything. And when your husband gets home or your significant other, you haven't done anything. And you hear his truck rolling in, you go, gosh, I haven't got one thing done. He's gonna be very disappointed. I'll tell you, all you have to do is get you a skillet, oven proof that is. You take that thing, put a stick of butter in it, and you skin and you slice up onions. And if you got mushrooms, you throw that in too, add a little bit. And you put them things in about 300, 350. And in no time, it's gonna start smelling up the kitchen. Well, he's gonna think you've been doing something. Well, you have been doing something, but not what he wants you to do. And so, then he can just sit in his easy chair and open up a, a, a beer or something, and kick back, and you're sitting in here, and you're just taking it easy. You got the music going on, and, and you got something smelling up the kitchen, and then you can take your time and you don't have to be rushed. That is the way I do it. Okay, next we're going to put celery. I've already uh, taken the strings out, put the celery in here. Y'all, this is all you need for supper. If you wanna add some cornbread, make some cornbread. I'm not going to tonight. Um, in the meantime, you might wanna just kinda of move some of this around. You don't have to. It's gonna, it's gonna be wonderful as it is. I'm tr I try to do very good nutritious meals and I like to do things that you can warm back up because I stay busy. Um, I'm an insurance, I have a little insurance agency and uh, so I stay very, very busy. Um, but anyway, See, I'm putting in these carrots. And then, we've got some good, good new potatoes. Now, I planted a ton of them. I got some cow troughs. <laughs> and I filled them up with some wonderful, wonderful dirt. And I planted them. My mama Gillis taught me how to plant them. And y'all, I think I'm gonna have some good potatoes. At least I'm gonna get something out of my gardens this year. Gosh, I can't even believe it. Well, anyway, I hope you don't mind my little stories. Okay, now this is gonna take, mm, this will probably take about an hour and a half to cook. And again, I put it on 350. Now I'm putting some more of that sole seasoning in, all right? Now, and I've got some pepper. So we've got pepper, we've got the sole seasoning. If you don't have the sole seasoning food, I mean um, uh, food seasoning, and you know it's got all that, just put pepper. All you have to do is put pepper, paprika, um, salt, seasoning salt if you want to. And y'all, you can also um, and put a little bit of red pepper, now, I'm going to put a little bit of thyme. If you don't have thyme, because you know how I am, you use what you have in the kitchen cupboard. Well, I do have thyme in there. But if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'm going to let you go off and say, 
well, I can't uh, make all this because I don't have all this stuff. Y'all, I'm gonna tell you something. Um, just, mm -mm. you do what you can do because y'all, it is hard to come home, work all day long, and to cook. And you, whatever you have in that kitchen, the season, the spices, I just have a whole lot that I have had left that uh, I've used and some of them I have left. And I'm just using up what I have. Now, you're gonna use chicken broth, okay? Now I've got also green peas in here. And I'm gonna put uh, a few green peas. Let me just shake that a little bit. The green peas, I'm gonna put them in uh, later. I'm gonna let this cook about, I'm say, gonna say about 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna put the green peas, open this up and just pour them in there. And they will they will have to have time to shift and you can put the rest of them. So you see, you're gonna have everything you need. And I always like to make colorful meals. So this can't get any colorful, any more colorful than what it is. So you've got the celery, you've got the new potatoes, you've got onions, um, you have got carrots, and you're gonna have green peas. So you have got a lot of vegetables. You've got really your daily average um, requirement of vegetables. Um, Y'all, I hope you enjoy me uh, doing these cooking videos for you. I certainly enjoy it. Um, I do have a cookbook out called Supper Time in the South and it's right here. Uh, this particular recipe is not in there. Any recipe that I do, I will be um, sure to tell you what I put in everything. Um, and you can get my recipe, you can look. Um, there is a notice down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but y'all, you know, more than anything, I would like to be able to share with you the traditional stories that I have growing up in the South and also just telling you about things about life that I've encountered and I've had a great life and I love to cook. This is what I like to do is to show my love to people. When someone is in, when someone is in a hump, now my hump means they are not feeling well or they're depressed about something, I like to go cook them something and bring it to them. Um, elderly people, I like to, if they have a birthday, uh, I like to fix them meals and take it to them. Because you know what, when you get yourself, when you get to feeling down, all you have to do is do something good for somebody else and you're not gonna feel down anymore. I promise you that, because that's exactly what I do. And a lot of people think, oh, she, she's always so uh, energetic. Yeah, I'm energetic, all right. But believe me, sometimes, you know, I get down in the dumps, but it's not very often. So um, I'm gonna come back to you in just a little bit. Uh, and show you, it's gonna be just about an hour, and plate this or put it out and let you see how wonderful it is. And you just make sure that your chicken is good. I always cook my chicken. I just stick a thermometer in it, and I'm gonna make sure that my chicken is uh, a good 180 degrees. And it'll be all pieces when, when I cook it. And so I'm gonna put the top on it, okay? And it's very heavy. And don't forget that in 30 minutes, I'm gonna add the green peas, okay? And I'll probably put a little bit more chicken broth, not much, because you're gonna get juices from the chicken. Um, if you like me, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and um, if the Lord is willing, I'll see you back in about an hour, okay? Thank you so much, appreciate you. Bye-bye now. Hey, y'all, this is Catherine. Thank you so much for being a part of my Supper Time in the South video. I told you I would be right back. Supper is just about out of the oven, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you, just as I promised, I have got a very good little quick icebox chocolate tort that I have made, and I am used to make it for my kids all the time. So, this is what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna show you this, the dessert, and then I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. It can sit, I'm, being, I'm making it um, with instant pudding 
And then after I get through with it, then I'm gonna take supper out, I'm gonna plate it, and you can see what we fix for supper, okay? All right, first of all, now I'm gonna put all of my stuff here for the sake of time. All right, and put it right there on the um, oven. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I've used one small box of vanilla pudding, okay? Two cups of milk, all right? This is for each box of pudding. And you can use, in, you can use whole milk, 2%, 1%. This is 1%. Y'all, I try to watch some calories. But y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm a sweet eater. Now I'll tell you, my very, this is the way I am. I love meat, vegetables, sweets. And I love my bread, but I can do without it, all right? And I'm gonna, as you know how to do vanilla, uh, I'm gonna instant breakfast, instant breakfast, gosh, that's what I drink for breakfast too sometimes. Um, instant pudding, you just do it up really, really good. As you see here, um, I have layered graham crackers. This is simple, very simple. In a nine by 12 or 13, I think it's um, uh, 13, a uh, little dish. And it's going to set up in just a little bit. All right. This is so, listen, your kids can do this. It's getting thicker and thicker and thicker. Now I'm, gonna, I'm slopping a little bit. All right, I'm going to let that set up just a little bit. And I'm going to tell what I got to do when I get through with this, can't you? I'm going to do the um, oats, excuse me. Here's the chocolate. Pudding. And it's also, now sometimes, let me tell you what I would do. I would double it, like if, I, if we were gonna have company or something. All right, we're doing the chocolate. And then, let me just go ahead and tell you this little part. Uh, we're gonna top it with Cool Whip, but we're gonna take about four or five tablespoons of cocoa, and I sifted it. And let me show you, I sifted it in this little um, mixing bowl. And, uh, cause you know cocoa is lumpy. And so that's all you're gonna do, and then you're gonna put your uh, uh, Cool Whip on it and put it on here. You just see, it, it's gonna turn out to be really something neat. I always kinda have to have a dessert. But y'all, I'm telling you what, I'm gonna have so much fun with you because it's coming up holiday time. Pretty soon, I will be doing fruitcakes and all the other stuff that I do. I'm gonna show you, um, well, I'm going to show you how to make vanilla flavoring, lemon flavoring. I make all my flavoring, y'all. Um, I don't spend that money. I mean, shoot, if you think I'm going to go to that grocery store and spend, you know, almost $10 for a thing of vanilla flavoring? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, I'm not going to do that. No way. Okay. All right. If you look at this. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Woo. All right. See, this is about done. Okay, this is done. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the same one for this. And now you're gonna see something about me. And you're gonna say, that woman, she cooks all the time and she just uses old stuff. Yeah, I do. Um, I use stuff belonging to my mama Gillis. And that's my Grandmama, my Mama Gillis. I call her Mama Gillis. Mama Gillis and my mama. Yes, I have. I've always done that. Um, I don't go, I never have gone out and bought a brand new. All the years, all my years, and I'm not seeing how long. You see what I'm doing? See, you see that chocolate, that cocoa? It's not going to be real dark. It's just going to give it a touch. But all my years, getting back to my um, talking, all my years of cooking, I've never, you know, I've always, always gotten used to what I like uh, to use. And that's just what I've used, period, zip. I'm not gonna go out and spend a ton of money on uh, dishes. One day I might if I feel like it, but I don't, I don't have a desire to. All right, let's do the vanilla first, okay? 
look at here. Isn't this something? Simple, 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 simple. Now you tell me if your kids were, and oh, let me just tell you this. Let them lick the spoon in the bowl. Oh man, my mother, God love her. I'm, I've still got her on this earth, thank goodness. I'm not gonna tell you how old she is because she wouldn't want that because Southern women don't like to tell their age. All right, see this? Yeah, bless her heart. When she make a cake, now if that was one time she was stingy. She would not let me lick anything just like this, especially a cake. I'd want to lick the bowl on the icing or something, and she would. So I'd wait till she'd leave, you know, or, or you know, get out of the room, and I'd pinch it. She'd make that icing, and when I start making cakes and show y'all my cakes, y'all gonna love it, but I'll tell you, show you exactly what I would do. Okay, you see that? Okay, guess what we're gonna do now? We're gonna layer this. Look here. Now you may have seen this before, but that's all right. Don't matter. And if you wanna use the honey ones, uh, or cinnamon, this is the, the cinnamon sugar, because I like a little bit of sugar. You'll probably find out a lot of, like a lot of sugar and that stuff, but you know what? That's just the way it is sometimes. All right, you see what I'm doing? It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want you to get all bent out of shape. You see that? Now, we're gonna add the chocolate. And I'm gonna tell you something. I find that using just this little mixing bowl and using these little whisks, I find this better than putting it in a blender or anything else because you can um, get all the grain, uh, grains out of uh, pudding. A lot of times when you mix it, use a mixing bowl and, and the beaters, I don't care, it splatters everywhere. Oh my gosh, you get it everywhere. Well, you saw, saw my hand and got it all over my overalls. Okay. All right. So, I'm using the same spoon because we're going to cover it up anyway. All right, look here. We're going to do this. Isn't that neat? And y'all, I keep saying about children, men love this too. Okay? Now let me show you this. You see here, I'm going to back it up this year. Oh my gosh. If I'm not going to be something else. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here, I've already got this pudding, excuse me, this uh, poop whip. If y'all wasn't watching, I'd sit here and lick this. But I'm not. I don't want y'all to say I'm a heathen. That's what my mom, mama would call it, say I'm a heathen. If I did that on TV, oh Lord, Jesus. I think no way. Look here what I did. And it doesn't hurt one bit to get some of this pudding on the cool wheel. Not one bit. And then I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator. And it'll be great in a few hours. It doesn't take but about a couple of hours. Overnight's good, but you don't have to have, wait overnight. You can wait about three or four hours and, um, and get it out. And you can cut it or spoon it, whatever you want to do. And if you really want to get uh, uh, fattening, uh, you can melt some chocolate and just go sh 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 all over it. We're not gonna do that though. All right, I'm gonna put this over here. You know what I'm gonna do later when y'all aren't watching. Trust me, you know. So here you go, y'all. Here is your quick little dessert. And it is called, it's in my cookbook. It is cho called Chocolate Pudding Tort. And y'all, it is so good and these kids will love it. All right, and you will too. And all it takes is a box of Cool Whip and two uh, little small, uh, boxes of jello pudding and um, and then it takes um, about four or five tablespoons of cocoa and it takes um, graham crackers your graham crackers and it takes one and a half of these sleeves of graham crackers that is it y'all that is it so we'll go over here and throw that away we've got this and so um, 
I'll be right back. Uh, I'm going to run over here and I'm going to get our supper, okay? It's very heavy. And gosh, I hope I don't make a mistake and drop it all over everywhere while I'm on uh, the tube. Just a minute. Man alive, is this, is this heavy. Y'all, this is great to have company over. You have everything in the world you want. Just a minute, let me go shut this oven. <laughs> oh, y'all. I have to watch out. This is, I shouldn't say this, but I am. <laughs> I don't like to get steam on my eyelashes, and I'm not going to tell you why. I learned the hard way. Wondered what was going on with my eyelashes. I think you already know what was going on. Oh, yeah. I was sitting there watching TV one night and my eyelashes started coming off. And, uh, cause y'all, seriously, I was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. So the steam will do it. So girls, if you've got, and ladies, if you've got extensions, please, please, uh, don't be hovered over uh, steam, you, especially when you make pasta or something like that. You kinda gotta step back. I don't mind telling it. I sure don't. I've already checked the temperature on this chicken. And if you want me to check it, I will, just for the sake of, look here at this nice, look at there, these potatoes, new potatoes. Okay, now we're going to get, and it's got a lot of juice in it. Looks so good. Let me get one down at the bottom. The ones down at the bottom are a little bit more, um, they're all completely done, trust me, they are but they're a little bit browner, but they're, they're all to pieces, all to pieces. And to be, be quite honest, I like my chicken all to pieces. Now, if you don't want this skin, just toss it aside. Um, Y'all, I'll tell you, I don't eat the skin. I used to eat it a lot, but I don't eat the skin, but it sure makes it juicy for you. And um, just do what you want to do, but that's what I like to do. Now see, look at that big piece. Isn't that, doesn't that look good? There you go. I think I'm gonna leave that skin on that one. All right, and I also, so you look at that supper here. Doesn't that look nice? Y'all, it, it did not take that long. It's just the preparation and <laughs> that's it, y'all. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. And if you like me, give me a thumbs up. And we'll see you back if the Lord's willing. And thank you. And thank you, Mike. Mike is my cousin. Um, his daddy was my Mama Gillis's brother. And he is the one that has helped me with these videos. And I hope y'all continue watching me because this is so exciting for me. There are so many things I'm going to show you. And I am so thrilled at showing because, see, I like older stuff. I, even though I eat out of China, that's about the only new things I, you know, I get uh, and that I, you know, cater to myself. But I like to use older dishes because y'all, I'm telling you something. Um, they made things better a long time ago. Um, I have an old vintage oven that I use when I have a lot of people over for, um, you know, for Thanksgiving or Christmas. I'll have to show it to you one day. It is really neat. You know how much I paid for that? 50 bucks. 50 smackers. That's it. It was great. So this is me, and um, thank you so much. Bye-bye now. See ya.